Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. Today's Spindle Spotlight is going to be a series of different names for spindles that pretty much all spin the same. So what I have, the first spindle that I'm going to talk a little bit about is a traditional Russian style spindle. These are all turned from one piece. So they're, again, they would be considered a, a single piece of wood. And they are probably some of the easiest tools, uh, most traditional tools to come by, some of the easiest tools to come by. They are also some of the slowest styles to work with. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I did a uh, rushing toward fall with all of my Russian spindles, and I do have one of those here that I'm going to feature. I am actually only going to be spinning on one of them though because so many of them are very similar in how they spin. So just to get it started. So as you can see, they're not fast. They do require a spinning bowl. Depending upon the weight down at the bottom, that's going to determine how quick they spin. This one is from Woodland Woodworking and it does spin very, very fast. This one is from Spanish Peacock and it is a little bit slower. And if you'll notice, th there is a wobble on this one, but it is by no fault of the maker, this is my Franken spindle because the United States Postal Service decided that it would be really interesting to see what would happen when you break one of these in two. So I was, when I received this spindle, it had literally been crushed and I was able to put it back together beautifully and and I love it. I love that it's my little Franken spindle and once I start getting a cop built up on it, it spins beautifully. So those are Russian styles right there. Then you have more traditional, this is a Pong style. And so the Pong as you build your cup, you build your cup more in the center, moving towards it. This one is also woodland woodworking, and it's it's ebony with turquoise inlay. This is an incredibly heavy spindle, which makes it spin very, very, very fast. Uh, it's one of my favorite Pong styles of spindles. This one is by Alice Savage. Uh, Wood turner from Italy. And as you can see, this one spins very much like the Russian spindles. It's a slower spindle in a lot of ways. And then the goddess style, which this is a very popular style. It's a goddess style pong. It's probably the slowest spindle that I have. And it's very, very lightweight. And it gives the spinner, you're, you're going to be with this particular style of spindle, I find that I'm pretty much turning consistently. So it's it's definitely a much slower spindle to work with. And then one of my favorites, this is also by Alice Savage. Uh, being Italian, I am almost 100% Italian. This is a traditional Italian style spindle. And what makes this unique is that you can spin it both kind of, it's a hybrid of being supported and suspended. It functions a little bit like a Navajo style or a, a lap style of spindle, only on a much shorter scale. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna demonstrate this one. I have other videos of me demonstrating this because you do need to be sitting uh, in order to get this one to work. Otherwise, it just becomes a support spindle. So. The spindle that I am going to demonstrate getting started is going to be the Pong by Alice Savage. So you do need a, a bowl and the peahen of Spanish Peacock did a beautiful podcast, a uh, blog and beautiful blog about picking your spinning bowl. And I'll drop that down in the description for you because it's definitely worth a read. The spinning bowl that you use is definitely going to affect the spin, both in speed and duration. So 
um, actually, no, I'm going to spin on this one. I'm going to start on this one. This one, you're going to just wind around the center. I actually, I'm going to demonstrate with this one because I've had a lot of people ask how to wind a cop when you have all of this intricate filigree down at the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that using combed top because it's easy to come by, tucking it under. Uh, what I would like to call the Q-tip style of getting it started. I am going to open it up, wrap a little bit around. And then slide it down and then continue to. Whoop. This shaft is very slick. So the, wool, the fiber does like to slip around on it. There you go. Now, a lot of people say, well, how do you continuously spin on a Russian style or a Pong style? And I'm going to be very honest, while it might look like I'm continuously spinning, I don't feel that I'm continuously spinning as much as continuously flicking. So if you get in close, you can see I keep my hands very close to the top of the shaft as I go. So my flicking fingers are also my unwinding fingers. So my index finger and my thumb do a lot of work when I'm working with Russian style uh, pong style and traditional one piece support styles of spindle because they're slow. So I'm going to draft out a little bit and then flick. So it's more like a flick and draft, flick and draft, flick and draft. And even though I'm drafting out, which gives the appearance of long draw, it's really not in the grand scheme of things. Because the Russian style spindles are so lightweight and because they spin so slow, I am doing a lot more frequent flicking. So pulling it out, you can see the single. Again, it's very consistent. And so then when I go to wind on, I'm gonna ignore this piece down here. I'm, I'm just going to leave that there and I'm going to start winding on in the middle here. And you'll notice there's this fluffy bit right here and that's personal preference. When I start spinning, I don't spin all the way out to a fine point. I always leave a little bit of extra fluff because if I need to join this as I'm plying, I wanna make sure that I've got enough there to join without my join slipping. So I do always go with a little bit of extra fluff it's kind of why I call it starting Q-tip style. So I'm just going to wind on and then I'll continue winding on here until this fills up and then I'll jump to up here and start winding on and then I'll jump to here. And then once this is full, then I will start building up the shaft. Personal preference, I usually don't ever completely fill my spindles. Usually I only go to about here uh, building up the cup and then stopping, winding off, or grabbing another spindle. So, with the Russian style, because I don't have a lot of spin time, this is where the choice to use a temporary cup also gives the appearance that I am perhaps spinning more continuously than I actually am. So, as I'm drafting out, I'm just gonna drop down, wind on that temporary cup, and then continue spinning. Keeping my fingers very close to the tip, 
so I can flick that much more quickly. So, hmm, teachable moment. I don't know what that was, but that did not want to become yarn. So, I'll fluff that out. Be a little bit trickier getting a join on a Russian style because they are slower, but I'm going to change. This is a very, very awkward spinning position, but I'm hoping that you can see what's happening from the perspective that I see it. So dropping the fiber down to wind on. and then winding on. I will admit, I do have a tendency to over twist when I'm working with Turkish or with uh, Russian style spindles. Because I don't draft out quite enough before I do that next twist. One of the things that I've noticed though with Russian style spindles is that it is really easy. And I don't know, maybe it's because they are not fast spindles in terms of how fast they, they stay spinning, but I find or I have found that it is very, very easy to get super fine, beautiful lace weight yarn when I'm working with the Russian style of spindle, which makes a lot of sense when you think about those beautiful lace shawls that you see from hand spun yarn on Russian spindles. So hopefully, I'm hoping that gives you a good angle of how I, it, <laughs> I don't keep the spindle going continuously, but there's definitely a rhythm and a continuity to it. And just in the short time that I've been talking, you see how much I have wound on. So it, it, it's kind of an interesting thing, even though these are, are touted or labeled as slower spindles, I don't necessarily find that to be true. And I've mentioned it in other spotlight videos as well. It really doesn't matter the style of spindle that you're using. Once you establish that rhythm and that continuity and determining where your hand needs to go, where the, the flicking momentum, how far you can draft out within that, that flicking momentum. And it, it's going to be different on every single spindle that you choose. So as you start working with them and you start building that muscle memory, that's where you can start getting those beautiful, consistent spins and you can spin very quickly on a, a portable medium. I, I just, I love working with spindles because there's so much variety and it gives you, depending upon the style that you pick, it gives you that opportunity to really analyze and look at the yarn that you're creating in the moment. And while you can do that with a spinning wheel, it's a little bit different. It's, it's a little bit different dynamic because as you're spinning on a spinning wheel, that, that single is being wound onto a bobbin and you don't have that intermediary step of being able to stop and analyze 
uh, like when I do my temporary cop, every time I pull that cop off, it gives me the opportunity to analyze what I've just spun and to make corrections for that. And that's something that a support spindle or any type of spindle is going to enable you to do. Support spindles, I think more so than suspended style. I am, I do, I love support spindles, I really do. So this was just kind of a, a, a quick overview. If you would like to see a particular style or if you want to see one of these spotlighted, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for checking in. If there are other tools or techniques that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments as well. Or if you've had any experience with any of these spindles, I'd love to hear about your experiences as you move through learning how to spin on a supported spindle. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy spinning.